Hey everyone, welcome to Rocky Watches Movies. Today we're diving back into the dystopian world where reality TV is deadly and Arnold Schwarzenegger is on the run in The Running Man from 1987. Whether you're a diehard fan of this 80s cult classic or just discovering the thrill of the game, we've got some mind-blowing facts, behind-the-scenes secrets and hidden details that will make you see this film like never before. So hit that subscribe button and join us as it's time to start running through 20 things you never knew about The Running Man. The film was adapted from the book of the same name by Richard Bachman. Unbeknownst to the film's producers, Bachman was a pseudonym for renowned horror author Stephen King. The novel was the final work published under the alias before King's identity was revealed. Despite King's secret being exposed by the time of the film's release, he insisted on being credited as Richard Bachman. While the film The Running Man shares some basic elements with Stephen King's book, such as a dystopian setting, a protagonist named Ben Richards, and the titular game show, the two works diverge significantly. The book presents a much darker, grittier story. It takes place in 2025. Ben is described as scrawny, his daughter is very sick, his wife has had to resort to prostitution, and Ben is blacklisted from work. There are a number of deadly game shows, like the one where people with heart conditions run on a treadmill for money. Ben goes on the show The Running Man voluntarily to earn some cash. The executive producer is Dan Killian and the host is named Bobby Thompson. Stephen King even wrote in The Importance of Being Backman that Richards in the book was as far away from the Arnold Schwarzenegger character in the movie as you can get. The production of the film was plagued by directorial turmoil. Multiple filmmakers, including George P. Cosmatos, known for Rambo First Blood Part 2 and Cobra, and Ferdinand Fairfax, were attached to the project before being dismissed due to creative clashes with the producers. Cosmatos apparently wanted to move the setting to a shopping mall. Andrew Davis, who would go on to direct Under Siege, was briefly at the helm, but also departed after a week of filming. Carl Schenkel declined the position, leaving the director's chair to Paul Michael Glazer, better known for his acting role as Starsky on 70s TV cop show Starsky and Hutch. Schwarzenegger has been vocal about his disappointment with this decision, attributing the film's shortcomings to Glazer's television-style direction, which he believes diluted the film's potential. Before Arnold Schwarzenegger landed the role of Ben Richards, Dolph Lundgren, Christopher Reeve and Patrick Swayze were considered for the part. For the role of the villainous Damon Killian, game show host Chuck Woolery was initially considered, but scheduling conflicts prevented his involvement. Ultimately, Schwarzenegger suggested his good friend Richard Dawson for the part. When Richards and Amber arrive at the airport, the announcer mentions all flights to Pretoria, Tutuville and Mandelaberg are on schedule. Given the political context of South Africa at the time, with Pretoria as the administrative capital of the country, Desmond Tutu, a big anti-apartheid and human rights activist, and Nelson Mandela imprisoned, it is a subtle commentary on oppression and the struggle for freedom in apartheid era South Africa. If you're enjoying the video, be a gladiator and hit that subscribe button. The Running Man served as a blueprint for the pitch of popular television show American Gladiators. Screenwriter Stephen D'Souza claims that when the creators of American Gladiators pitched the idea to the producers, they used film footage from the movie and stated, we're doing exactly this, except the killing part. The show became a global phenomenon, spawning numerous international adaptions. A subtle nod to television culture can be found in Killian's office, the poster for the fictional TV show Hate Boat is a playful reference to actor Richard Dawson's appearance on the popular series The Love Boat. Dawson, synonymous with the game show Family Feud, brought a familiar host to the dystopian world of The Running Man. A new adaption of Stephen King's The Running Man is in the works. Paramount Pictures has announced an upcoming remake directed by Edgar Wright, with him and Michael Bacall penning the screenplay. Glenn Powell, known for his roles in Top Gun Maverick and Twisters, has been cast as the lead. The actor has expressed excitement about the project, 
emphasising that Wright's vision is a departure from the 1987 Arnold Schwarzenegger film and adheres more closely to being grounded in the Stephen King version. Production on the new Running Man is set to begin later in 2024. The character of Dynamo, the opera-singing villain, was brought to life by Erland van Lip. A classically trained Heldon baritone, Erland's vocal performance during Dynamo's aria from The Marriage of Figaro was authentic and haunting. Tragically, Erland passed away from a heart attack just two months before the film's release at the young age of 34. A character known simply as Sub-Zero is formally introduced as Professor Sub-Zero by announcer Phil Hilton. The role was portrayed by Professor Toru Tanaka, a name synonymous with his professional wrestling career from the 1960s to the 1980s. Unfortunately, he wasn't a real professor though. As Killian is congratulating his production team, he is standing next to a TV that is rolling credits for the show. The credits are quite easy to read on a large screen and are, thank you, Tim George, Gary Paul, Rob Keith, you, me, us, them. What next? I don't know. Titles? Type M wrong. Makeup? Paint your face. Props? Property. Locations? Buy too long here. Art director? Red G Blur and primary colours. Music? Do re me. Catering? How bizarre. The film's creators drew inspiration from the controversial Japanese game show Trans American Ultra Quiz. The prize went to whichever contestant could stand the pain and humiliation the longest. The Running Man creatively repurposed existing footage to enhance its visual spectacle. The film incorporates helicopter attack sequences directly from the 1976 classic King Kong. The Running Man boasts a surprising musical pedigree. Many viewers may not have recognised Mick Fleetwood, the legendary drummer of Fleetwood Mac in his role as the underground resistance leader, Mick. Adding to the rock and roll connections, Dweezil Zappa, son of rock icon Frank Zappa, makes a brief appearance as Stevie, a character name clearly referencing Fleetwood Mac's Stevie Nicks. And staying with musical connections, the energetic pre-game sequences in The Running Man featured choreography by the then-rising star Paula Abdul. Before becoming a pop star and American Idol judge, Abdul was a renowned choreographer, having worked with music legends like Janet Jackson, Duran Duran, Debbie Gibson and ZZ Top. Killian's introduction of Fireball as the leading rusher is a direct reference to actor Jim Brown's real-life status as the NFL's all-time leading rusher until the mid-1980s. Arnold Schwarzenegger's transition from action hero to politician was as dramatic as any of his film roles. He famously adopted the moniker The Running Man for his campaign bus. This high-profile campaign ultimately led to his election as Governor of California from 2003 to 2011. The film also features another future political figure, Jesse Ventura, who later served as Governor of Minnesota. The Running Man's influence extended beyond the realm of film. The arcade game Smash TV directly borrowed the concept of a game show-style arena filled with escalating challenges. Additionally, the film was adapted into its own video game, released for home computers like the Amiga and Atari ST during the late 80s. Arnold Schwarzenegger's prolific output in 1987 presented a challenge for studios. With The Running Man and Predator slated for a summer release, the decision was made to stagger their debuts. To avoid audience fatigue or having to choose between the two, The Running Man was pushed back to November. The film also boasts a big connection to the Predator franchise, featuring four actors from the series. Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously, Jesse Ventura, Sven Ole Thornson and Maria Conchita Alonso. And there you have it, folks. You now know a little bit more about The Running Man. If you enjoyed the video, which I presume you did as you got this far, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming to Rocky Watches Movies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.